Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum or an infinite series. We have 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth minus 1 sixteenth plus so on and so forth. Where we have the perfect squares in the denominator. And in other words, we have the reciprocals of perfect squares. But the signs also alternate plus, minus, plus, minus, so on and so forth. I think we've done a similar problem before, even though I can't remember exactly if we did the same one. Hopefully not. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and take a look. And today you're going to be seeing two videos because I messed up on Monday and I'd like to do a redo on that one. So how do you handle a sum like this? Obviously, you need to be familiar with a formula, uh, which is called Basel's problem, by the way, or Basel problem. So if you have the following sum, 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth. In other words, if you're adding the reciprocals of squares, perfect squares, then this can be written, obviously, as n equals 1 through infinity. And that will be 1 over n squared, right? You could express it using sigma notation. And this is equal to pi squared over 6, thanks to Euler. Other mathematicians proved it too. And maybe one day we can take a look at the proof of this formula. But for right now, we're just going to be focusing on how could we get the given expression, the series, from this one, okay? If you take a good look, you're probably going to realize that these two series are very similar. The only difference is the alternating series. We have the plus minus the plus minus scenario. So you can think of it this way. Wouldn't that be nice if you could turn these into negatives? And you can do that by subtracting it. Well, first of all, if you just go ahead and write the original series, which we have a formula for. And from it, you use subtract the even squares like this. What's going to happen? These terms are going to cancel out. And you're going to end up with the squares of odd reciprocals. So it's not what you're looking for. You do need the evens, but with a minus sign. So we kind of need to subtract it again to get them in minus sign, make sense? In other words, if you take this, and then from this, subtract two times one fourth, plus two times one sixteenth, so on and so forth. Other word, in other words, you subtract the evens twice, and then you get what you're looking for, because this will be one fourth minus two times one fourth, this is going to be negative one fourth. One sixteenth minus two times one sixteenth is going to be negative one sixteenth. Make sense? It's kind of like x minus two x is equal to negative x. We want to turn x into negative x, and that can be done by subtracting two times x. You get the idea? Very simple, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. What can we do with a sum like this? Well, first of all, this is something we already know, right? It's pi squared over 6. But what about this one? Can we just simply take out a 2? I mean, we could, but there's actually a better way to do it. So let's go ahead and focus on this. We have 2 times 1 over 4 plus 2 times 1 over 16. Of course, this is 2 squared, 4 squared, and then the next one is going to be 6 squared. So it's going to be 2 times 1 over 36, so on and so forth. Now we can actually go ahead and do this. Instead of just taking out a 2, why don't we take out... 2 times 1 fourth, right? Then we're going to be able to start with 1 again. First term is going to be 1. The second one, to get 1 16th, you do need 1 fourth. To get 1 over 36, you would need 1 over 9. Basically, since these are even squares, like we have 2 and squared, we can basically factor out a 4, and that would just be n squared. So in other words, when we add these up, right? We're going to be adding this, and you can easily pull the one fourth out like this. And the inside, you're going to have the original series one more time. So, in other words, 
we get this again. So now we have the following. 1 plus 1 fourth, which is pi squared over 6 minus. Now you are taking out 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half. And of course, this is the same as pi squared over 6. So that's the answer you're looking for. This is equivalent to pi squared over 6 minus pi squared over 12. If you make a common denominator, from here you get pi squared over 12 as the sum of this infinite geometric series, thanks to Euler again. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Let me go ahead and write it down one more time so you can see the whole picture. 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 over 16, so on and so forth. This should equal pi squared over 12. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.